welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and like the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching. Welcome back everyone to another video and this one I am actually quite proud of. Unfortunately, this has been postponed way too long and I need to post this before it becomes winter and then the whole meaning of it just kind of dies. Because this short one shot, I say short, but it's not really short, it discusses the symbolization of autumn and if you cannot tell from the cover photo, it has also come to my attention that our countries are very different. That also includes forms of transportation, so I'm going to go ahead and show you America's school buses, that way you get a picture of what I'm picturing. This is basically the average American school bus for children. This is basically what the inside looks like, except the ones that I always used were more of a lower roof, so I'd always hit my head on top of it. Well, we surprisingly got very informational in just the intro, so let's go ahead and get to it. When you look out at the sky on a beautiful, cool autumn day and feel the cold breeze, it made it the perfect weather to be in. The beautiful colors of yellows, oranges, reds, and browns blended into one another. It's as if gazing into a mirage. How could the world produce such a beautiful sight? Was it considered taboo to be gazing at the leaves, or maybe even living in autumn? Their tree branches are empty, their leaves littering the streets of Tokyo, making it appear like golden sheets. It was the perfect time to wear warmer clothes and get the coffee mugs out to drink hot coffee and tea. That's how most saw Autumn, at Smooth thought something entirely different. The life of leaves were dying, the shades of green would turn into a dull color of death before they fell to the ground. To the setter, autumn symbolized death and the passing of time. Atsumu have been alive for 16 years and have seen this process 16 times. Each time, his mind wandered to death knowing it was only a matter of time until he perished and joined the leaves on the ground. He was perfectly healthy and active, yet he can never shake the fear. Are you excited for your training camp? Atsumu peeled his golden eyes from the window, gazing at his lover. He shouldn't be thinking of things like that. He was young and had plenty of time. Enjoy the present, he would ruin himself. Sukusa was only in town for a limited time. Treasure it! He and his team, Inarazaki, had planned a week-long training camp so that they would prepare for the next season. Of course, I plan to kick ass so I can set to you one day. The ace laughed, ruffling the smaller's hair from their position laying down with his arm under Atsumu. The older frowned. Is something on your mind? Atsumu turned back to the window. No, nothing at all. Get a room. Osama put a finger to his open mouth and faked a gagging sound on his brother's relationship. Oh, come on! The older twin threw a pillow towards the latter, who effortlessly dodged it. Atsuma gazed back out towards the tree in this front lawn of the window. There were still plenty of leaves on the tree, but they were changing colors and dying. Soon they would fall to the ground, leaving the tree bare and continue the cycle of life. Osama seemed to have noticed his twin's behavior. He got this way every time fall would come. Have you finished packing? Their trip started tomorrow. Not yet. He tore his eyes once more from the window, seeing his brother's worried gaze. You should probably go do that. We have an early morning tomorrow. Atsuma nodded his head, and Sakusa would peer back and forth at the twins, noticing the tense atmosphere. The setter got up from the couch and pulled his lover up with him. Come on, Omi. I hate packing, so you'll help me. He smiled, but it wasn't his same cheesy smile. The raven quickly glanced back at the younger twin, whose eyebrows were held at a tight furrow. Something was going on, and he was going to get answers. 
Once the couple made it up to the blonde's room, he shut the door and crossed his arms. Sumu, is something wrong? The smaller raised his eyebrow. I don't... Atsumu, don't hide anything. I'm worried. The setter sighed, pulling his suitcase out. Omi, what do you think about death? Wait, that sounded unnecessarily morbid. Death? I think I'm failing to comprehend. Well... He grabbed a bunch of clothes without paying much attention to and threw them on the bed. It's really complicated to explain, but do you ever question why we are here? Or what the future holds, if there even is a future? Sakusa walked over and started folding the clothes on the bed to neatly arrange in the suitcase. I never thought about it like that. It's a very dreadful thing to think about, so I ignore that thought. How about this? Can you see your future? Like, who you want to be? Sakisa thought for a moment. Well, I can see myself continuing volleyball, with you as my setter, of course. He smiled, nudging the setter's side. We'll still be together, maybe even engaged or married by that point. Atsuma smiled and felt a familiar throb in his chest. What about you? Well, how could he tell him what he really thought after Sakusa's prediction? I don't see a future. He smiled softly. No matter how many times I try to imagine it, whether it's continuing playing volleyball alongside with you, or helping my brother run his business, or even a criminal robbing the next bank, I... I just can't see it. And I'm scared. It was only a matter of seconds before Atsumu was pulled into a loving hug with the taller's arms wrapping around him as if he could protect him from any harm that may come his way. In truth, the ace had no idea what to say, only his soft touch was there to comfort his lover. There were fears, and then there were this. It's okay, love. We'll figure it out together. You aren't alone. Sakusa pulled away and cupped the smaller's face. I'm sure as hell gonna make sure there is a future. And one day, we will look back and think of the silly encounter. Atsumu laughed. He wished and preferred if that truly was his future, but something lingering in the back of his mind told him otherwise. Okay. He'll let his mind believe that even if it were for just a small moment. The couple were snuggled close together, sipping from their cups of tea. Atsumu had chamomile and the other had peppermint. The chilly autumn day had gotten significantly colder with the sun down, so they pulled out the heaters and held each other in their arms, taking in each other's warmth. Hey, Atsu? The smaller looked up, his hair was already sticking out in every direction, causing the taller to chuckle. Yes, Omi Omi? Whenever you get back, I need you to help me with some new routines that I've been thinking. I could ask my setter from Itachiyama, but he's graduating soon, so it would be pointless. The setter laughed. I don't mind. The trip will be a week, though, so... It's fine. I can wait. He smiled softly, placing a small kiss on the latter's forehead, then lips. Atsumu absolutely adored the side of Sakisa. Whenever they first got together, he was super hesitant, but this was nothing less than a relationship full of love and beautiful surprises. The blonde raised his head and placed it on Sakisa's face, his thumb gently caressing his two moles above his eyebrow. It was one of his top insecurities, but with the setter's constant love and affection, he loved them. At times, Atsumu would pepper kisses all over them so that he could prove that he loved them. I love you so much. 
The taller held the ladder close, as if his own life depended on it, and if he were to let go, Atsumu wouldn't be in reach anymore. Never forget that. Instead of getting a cheesy response from his lover, Kiyomi looked down seeing Atsumu's peaceful expression with his chest slowly moving up and down. You could have just said you were tired, silly. He placed a soft kiss on the top of his head before he followed his setter into slumber. Atsumu left early before the sun even rose to make it to his bus. As much as his lover insisted on dropping him off, his half-asleep dazed mind wasn't able to process and was tucked back into bed by the setter. He took one last glance at the tree that had fewer leaves than before. Don't worry, love. I'll be back soon. He placed a small peg over the top of his mills before leaving his home and boarding the bus alongside his younger brother, Insuna. Suna was half asleep, leaning onto a sama, making him laugh. You have to stay awake, Rin. The raven whined. It's too early to be awake. Asama laughed, half dragging the middle blocker inside the bus so he could get back to sleeping as soon as possible. The couple plopped into the seat, with the taller immediately falling back asleep, snuggling into Osama's side, before he placed a delicate kiss on the latter's cheekbone. Atsumu rolled his eyes at the sight of his twin using physical affection, but was secretly happy for him. He knew that Suna was a great person and his brother deserved everything. He was delighted seeing his brother happy. He would do his best to keep it this way for as long as possible. The captain of Inarazaki accounted for everyone before Kita made a quick announcement. Alright everyone, it's going to be a long bus ride, so take a nap while you can because once we get there, we will go straight into stretches. He concluded and quickly went back to Aaron's side, laying his head on the taller's shoulder. The bundled driver then boarded the bus and the team took off. Atsumu sat alone, whether a teammate was with their significant other or simply wanted to hog an entire seat so they could rest. Even if he did have an entire seat, he desired to have Sakusa by his side. Their time was limited from the start, but the fact that Sakusa was in town and he was away absolutely killed him. It wasn't fair. He sighed, leaning his head against the window. The bus was running at a fast rate. He looked towards the ground outside and saw colorful blurs of oranges and reds through the bus's headlights. The sun was finally peeking over the horizon, which would make getting sleep out of the question. At least for him. Atsumu lifted his head when he felt a slight jerk on the bus. Kita even raised his head from Aaron's shoulder to make a quick examination of the situation. They both thought nothing of it, until they felt a much more violent tug. Kita stood up and walked up towards the driver to ask what was going on when he caught a gleam of something in the corner of his vision. The peaking sun reflected off a glass bottle that was nearly empty. He recognized the logo because it was the same drink his grandmother would have to unwind after a certain long day at the farm. Stop this bus! Kita's outburst made everyone snap up, curious at all of the commotion being made, especially from the level-headed captain. Aaron stood up, wondering why his own lover was yelling. Even Suda sat up sleep being the last thing on his mind. Atsuma glanced at his twin, feeling the familiar panic that Autumn always brought up. The younger returned a look that told him that everything would be fine, but for once, he wasn't so sure. There was another violent tug on the bus whenever the driver had passed out from his drunken stupor. Kita grabbed onto the wheel, but the driver's foot was still on the gas, and he never could take control of the wheel. Kita took one last glance towards his teammates' frightened and panic-written expressions and gave an apologetic look for failing them as their friend and captain. 
he couldn't save them. The bus swerved with the leaves covering the road, making them more slick than usual. There was a deafening sound of glass shattering and screams coming from the volleyball players as the bus flipped over many times. Atsumi lost count. The first thing the setter could notice was the smell and feeling of the cold morning air. It was slightly foggy with the morning dew decorating the colorful leaves on the ground and the roof of the bus which he could oddly enough see. Honestly, it would be a perfect start to a day to go jogging in this weather. And the next thing he noticed made his entire body freeze over. He couldn't even tell if he was breathing or even had a pulse. He just knows the sight was enough to kill him. His eyes met the same grey-blue eyes that he's known his entire life, but there was something different. These held no emotion, or even life. Samu? He was unresponsive. His eyelids were lazily held open. His arms were loosely holding Suna, who was also frighteningly still. His chest wasn't moving up or down like it should. He was gone. Samu! He went to run towards him, but was held back, being pinned by a metal beam from the bus's seats going through his abdomen. He wasn't sure why he hadn't noticed it sooner, but that didn't matter. He looked for Akita or Eren, somebody from Inarazaki, but he was met with the same blank stare. The black floors were painted in a crimson red. The setter turned back towards Osamu, his twin. His younger brother, someone he'd known in his entire life since the very first day, seeing him like this dead felt like half of him died. No. Tears stung his eyes. He couldn't accept this. He'd always imagined him being the first to die since he was older. Never once did he think that he would have to witness his twin's death. His own baby brother was dead in front of his eyes. Osamu! Fucking wake up! He strained against the beam, his throat burned. He wanted to scream and cry. He looked at how even when his brother was gone, he still had this protective manner towards Suna. If the middle blocker had known that those were his final moments with Osamu, would he have continued to nap? Knowing them, though, they would probably come up with some lame, cheesy line, like just being together was enough. At least... at least he was happy. Realizing he was all alone, and almost everyone he'd ever known was dead. He was scared. He didn't want to die. He prayed to any deity that was watching that this was all a dream, or the team would turn out fine, that at least his twin was okay. Give them back! Give him back! He couldn't accept this. He cursed whoever did this. In a way, he felt his prayer was being answered, just in a different way. He would reunite with his team and brother soon. His time was running out. Oh me. The blonde couldn't leave this world without saying anything to his lover. Not like this. He reached for his phone, but it was nowhere in sight. He wouldn't be surprised if it flew out the window during the commotion. Luckily, Osama's phone was close. The screen was beyond shattered, but it still worked. He found Sakusa's contact, leaving bloody fingerprints in its wake. The phone rang, and he only hoped that Sakusa was awake, and he would pick up the call. He was fading fast. The pieces of glass stuck in his skin began to feel numb. He couldn't move. It was getting hard to tell what was real and what was his delirious imagination from losing too much blood. What do you want, Mia? Atsumi laughed lightly, forgetting for a second that this was Osama's phone. It sounded like he had just woken up and he'd hoped that the ace would forgive him later for waking him. That's rude, Omi. 
His voice was strained and weak, but hopefully the latter didn't notice. How can he tell the one that he planned his entire future with that he would break all those promises and leave? There was a pause, and the Sutter could only imagine the latter doing a double take to check the contact name. Tsumu? Why are you using Osama's phone? I guess my phone didn't charge last night, and Sama wasn't using his. He could hear the taller moving around like he was sitting up in bed. His voice brought him peace. Is everyone else still asleep? Atsumu scanned the area that reeked of blood. The bodies of his teammates scattered both in and out the bus, the walls, floor, green grass, as well as the dead brown leaves that had scattered smears of a crimson red. He's always been afraid of letting go. Seeing his twin like this was like admitting he was letting go, even though he knew that they would be crossing paths again very soon. Yeah. Asleep. That was a better way of putting it. He couldn't help but laugh at the bitter edge. He always had a fear of dying, yet here he is, facing it head on, just when things were going great too. He had a future with the love of his life. He never knew what it was, but Sakusa was willing to help him. Finally, the blank visions of his future were finally making sense. The world was the tree. It still had many years ahead. There will be many sets of leaves that will bud and flourish before they wilt and die. Atsumu was merely another leaf, and the world would continue. I love you so much, Kiyomi. This caught the taller off guard. It was rare that the setter would use his real name. It was only whenever he was angry or really serious about something, and the sincerity laced in his voice told him he wasn't angry. I... I love you too. Is something wrong? No. He smiled. I just wanted to hear your voice. For one last time. Please, keep talking. He mustered the last of his strength to say that last sentence, relishing that the ace didn't question him any further. Well, whenever you get back from training camp, I thought of some additional approaches to try to practice on our attacks. He went on and on, Atsuma smiled, letting a single tear escape his eyes. Feeling his arm going numb from holding the phone, he dropped it onto his lap. While he couldn't move to press the speaker button, he was still able to hear his lover's voice, even if it was muffled from the blood getting into the speakers. I'm sorry I didn't have the courage to tell you, and you'll have to find out by somebody else. I'm sorry that you'll have to learn how to live without me. I'm sorry I broke our promises. I'm sorry I didn't really believe you when you said you'd make me a future. I guess I saw this coming. I'm sorry I gave you false hope. I'm sorry that I'm dying. With his dying thought, he thought of marriage vows, which were cringy, but at the moment, it gave him peace. I love you, Sakusa Kiyomi, even when after death does his part. He took in one last breath before he gave into his internal rest. I think that would definitely... Atsu? Are you still there? Sakusa chuckled. You could have just said you were tired, silly. He had a sense of deja vu hit him. I love you. Call me when you get there safely. He said, knowing that the latter wouldn't hear, and he couldn't have been more wrong. After he hung up the call, he glanced outside and saw the same tree Atsumu was so fixated on the day prior. There was one singular yellow leaf still on the branch. 
he witnessed that same leaf snap and fall to the ground. Well, now I'm kind of expecting all of you to murder me. But not to worry, I do already have an alternative version so that you do get a happy ending because this is kind of angsty even for me. So just expect that in the near future. And again, I am so sorry. I know you guys are- oh gosh, I'm so sorry. But not really. Anyways, thank you for watching. As always, if you'd like to be kept up to date, check out any of my social medias. I hope that you all have a wonderful day or evening.